Alright guys, so what we're going to go ahead and do is get started with our what to study for what? Chapter 3, right? Yes. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about Chapter 3 real quick. What was the main idea with Chapter 3? Who thinks they can tell me? What were we talking about? Taya. Marco Polo and Zimbi and how they discovered, how they discovered different parts of the world. Great, okay. Ruby, can you add on to that? Okay, good. So we talked about the trading of goods. Now, when we were trading goods, what was that known as? When they went ahead and they hopped in different things and they're bringing it across different areas. What was that known as? What are they using? Ella. They are using cargo. Caravans, right? Very oh, good. Caravans. Okay, good. So today, guys, the whole purpose of our lesson is to go ahead and review ideas that were focused on during our talk in chapter 3. Okay, so we mentioned different ideas like Marco Polo, we talked about uh, how he traveled around, we also talked about someone else. Who else did we talk about that wasn't Marco Polo? Oscar? Zhang He, right, very good. He was another person that was really important because they went across and they traveled and all sorts of great things. But we're going to talk about that as a review today. Okay, so the first thing that we need to know, guys, is Marco Polo, okay? And remember, Marco Polo isn't just a game that you play when you're swimming, right? You don't go across, you're not swimming around saying, Marco Polo, right? It's not the same thing. It was maybe inspired by that, but at the same time, Marco Polo was an important person. Can you all see that okay? Yeah. Uh, can you put it a little bit darker? Can you put it darker, Marco? Yeah. Like the I can't blue. See the word. I'm going to use black. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There we go. That's better. He was an important person who traveled to China. Yes, Madison. What is that second word? Right here? Yeah. Polo? Traveled to China. And his whole idea, guys, was to bring trade goods. Okay? He was bringing trade goods back from China. Okay, and why would he bring back trade goods? What was the whole idea of going to China to bring back trade goods? What did China have? Ascar, do you remember? Silk? Yes, they did. Very good. They had silk, okay? And did anyone else really have silk at that time? No. No, they didn't, okay? They didn't have silk, and China at the time was able to figure out, hey, we have silkworms, let's figure out how to make this silk into something that we can sell, okay? And that was really important, and Marco Polo wanted to get in on that, okay? He wanted to make sure he could take care of that. So what was that called? What was that route called? Hold it. Very good. Okay, so we've got the Silk Road. Okay, so the Silk Road was, I'm trying to get down so y'all can see, was a series of trade routes from China leading to different areas. And remember guys, we talked about why that was super important, okay? China had silk. If they had a lot of something, what was that known as? Surplus. Who said it? Angelina, what is it? Surplus. A surplus, right? They had a surplus of silk, okay? And we talked about in chapter one, if they have a lot of something, do they need to specialize in just that, or can they branch out? Branch out. Yeah, they're going to branch out, okay? If they just have one thing, they're not going to be like, okay, we have this and we're just going to stick with this. No, they're going to say, we have a lot of this, let's sell it, let's make some money, okay? <laughs> Very good. So Marco Polo wasn't from Asia, okay? He came from Europe. So Marco Polo... Tomorrow. Marco Polo's journey improved relations between Europe and Asia. Okay, that was the whole idea, guys. They came through 
And Marco Polo from Europe realized that there was silk there. So he went over to Asia, that's where China's located, and said, hey, let's go ahead and trade some goods, figure it out. Ella, what's up? Um, did anybody else travel with him? Yeah, um, it wasn't just Marco Polo. Marco Polo was the person that was leading the expedition, but he had lots of other peoples that went along with him. Yes, Taya. Okay, good. I was in the way. Yeah. That happens. Okay, so, Ascari, you told me that, who else is someone that we talked about? Zheng He, right? And the idea of Zheng He was what? Why did Zheng He go ahead and travel around? To get gold. Well, part of that was... Salt? Went, salt and gold was a big part of that, but the whole idea with Zheng He was that he was trying to expand the borders of China, okay? He was coming from um, different areas, and he was trying to expand trade. So Zheng He... He worked to expand trade. Because don't you think that when they were going ahead and starting this, if they had trade routes, do you think it's important because people would be like, oh, I know where this place is, or I know this person. Do you think that would be important to do if you wanted your country to be successful? Yes. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Did they have cell phones, internet back then? No. no, they needed to trade. They needed to expand their uh, areas that they were trading with so that people knew who they were. Okay? And with this... He worked to expand trade and increase, what does it mean to increase? To get yeah, to get bigger, to increase, or to bring up, okay? So then he worked to expand trade. He wanted to increase a desire for goods. Okay, he wanted to increase his desire for goods. I'm getting out of your way. Okay, so when we're trading, okay, say we're trading, okay, first of all, what's a good definition of trade? Morgan. Uh, it's like, I give something to you and you give something to me. Right, very good. Okay, so I would have something that maybe you wanted, right? And then you had something that I wanted, and we decided, hey, let's go ahead and trade this off, Okay. And that word could be like exchange. Yeah, it could be exchange. I like that word. It's a great word. Exchanging ideas. Okay, so say I have this pur purple marker right here. And I say, wow, this is a pretty great purple marker. But then I go over to Miss Abby and I'm like, hey, I like this yellow highlight a lot. Do you have a purple marker, Miss Abby? No, she doesn't. Do you like that purple marker, Miss Abby? She sure does. Well, Abby, I like this yellow marker. Can we trade so that I have this and you have that? Okay, well, very good. And that would be an establishment of trade relations. Because now, Abby and I have exchanged these goods. These are goods, okay? Things, items. So Abby and I went ahead and exchanged these things. I have something, now she has something else that I once had. But maybe I have this one marker that I brought with me. Maybe I have a whole store full of just these markers. Now I have this marker. If you are someone that goes to my store, and you see only these markers, and then all of a sudden you see this marker, which one are you going to want? All that, of these markers or this one? That one. This one, right? You're like, hey, I've never seen that before. I want it. Give it to me. Okay? So the whole idea is that we are increasing, we're in improving our economy with that. Okay? Good. Yes? Wouldn't it be better to like trade your whole store? Well, then you don't have anything else that's left, right? You don't have any of those purple items left. No, like, okay, so like, trade like half of the purple markers for like different kind of markers. Well, you could try that. But they wanted to both, they wanted to have some of what they already had and then increase what they were going to have. Okay, good. So let's think about this, guys. Does anyone remember the name of the place that had maybe a lot of gold? Madison. Timbuktu was close. Close. Ghana? Ghana. Okay, who else was going to say Ghana? You? Yes. Very good. Okay, guys, so you need to understand that Ghana, okay, Ghana, because it was a big trading center, was known as the land of gold. Okay. And the reason why it was known as the land of gold is because not only did they have somewhat of a surplus of it, 
but it's because it was in the center of all these trading routes. People came there. They were trading. There was a bunch of business going on. So they were thriving in terms of their economy. Yes? Did they ever run out of gold? Um, they might have. Uh, but with gold, the physical gold itself was located in like stones and rocks. They had to mine it out. Okay, that's how they found it in the first place. So they would simply go out to places, and eventually that would be depleted. But they might go ahead and find some more. Okay. So a major trade route, Ghana, is our land of gold. Okay. It is our land of gold. Very good. Now, can we think about any African nations that were involved with this? African nature, nations that might have been involved with their trade routes. One of them has kind of a girl's name, if you think about it. It starts with an M. Mali. Mali. Okay, very good. M-A-L-I. Mali. Okay. So, African kingdoms... And now we're bringing Africa in the mix, okay? So we have Asia, Europe, and now Africa. African kingdoms that increase their wealth. What is wealth? Destiny. Money, right? Money, and it's not necessarily measured in just money, but it could be things that are of value to other people, okay? So for me... Okay, if I were to go over and I were to go to, if I were to go to, say, uh, a tribe in Africa, and I would be like, I would like to go ahead and buy a Coca-Cola, please. What are they going to do with this? Nothing. They're going to look at it and be like, I don't want that. What is this, a piece of plastic? For me, I mean, there, you know, there might be a little bit of money on there, but I can buy something here in the United States, right? But somewhere that they don't use that, it's not going to matter much to them, okay? They want to make sure that they're using something that is of value to them. Morgan. Okay. Does Ghana still have gold there? And do people still trade? They do still trade. We still have trade that goes on. Ghana might have gold. They were known as the land of gold because they're a major trade route, okay? They're a trade route and a trade center. But with that, we're not sure if they're so dependent on mining gold as they are accruing wealth through other ways, okay? Ella and then Allison, we have to move on. Yes? So, how... Oh, no. Okay. Allison. Didn't in Ghana oh. they trade salt for gold? I mean, right. gold for salt. Right. We're going to get to that, too. Oh. Very good. Yes? So, what does Africa use for money? Well, African, you can use a number of different things. It depends on which area that you're in. Okay, South Africa is a little bit more Do they wealthy and stable. Bills? What's that? Do they use dollar bills? They could use. They don't. Maybe the U.S. currency is like a major type of way that people buy things throughout the world, but it's not the only way. Okay. So African kingdoms that inc increase their wealth include Mali, M-A-L-I, and Shanghai. Okay. And I think I heard someone say Shanghai earlier, somewhere over here. Shanghai. Okay. Shanghai kingdom. They increased as a result of their trade. Good. What's a caravan? What is a caravan? Let's see if I can pick out someone. Caravan. Miss Gidry, do you know what a caravan is? I can hear it. It's a person that does something. What? Well, yeah, that's very good. Okay, a caravan, Clement, can you add on to that? A caravan is a group of traders traveling together. Very good. Okay, I like that a lot. A caravan is a group of people who are moving from one place to, a next, to the next, okay? So when we're talking about a caravan, okay, caravans move goods, okay? What do they look like? Is that that's just a lowercase. What do they look like? Well, a lot of the time, Is it like caravans are on camels, camels right? Um, this was when we were talking about the early Europeans, okay? So that was part of it. Hold on, let me go ahead and take this and we're asking questions. Okay. So with this, we have 
caravans, okay? And the caravans are moving goods. When we're talking about the Sahara Desert, okay, that's where camels come into it, okay? The Sahara Desert. You see a lot of camels in the desert. They have humps on their back, which stores what? Water. Water and fat, okay? And that's able to go ahead and help that camel stay hydrated while they go. If you had any other type of animal, it's not suited for the desert. And it's probably not going to make it very far. That's why they use camels in the caravan. Okay, so when we take a look at this, the caravan was intended to go ahead and bring that stuff to where they needed to be. They headed southward, okay? And remember, we talked about the compass, right? We had never ever, or never eat soggy waffles, or soggy watermelons, or sour watermelons, any of those. Okay, so if they're going southward, they're going down, okay? So they're talking about how they move down, okay? They move southward across the Sahara Desert, okay? They move from one place to the next. Okay, good. Allison, you had mentioned something about salt. What do you tell me about salt? Very good. They didn't have a whole lot of salt, but they had a lot of gold. They had a what of gold? A surplus. surplus, right? They had a surplus of gold. They had a lot of it. So here they're like, oh great, I need salt. Salt's good. Remember, we talked about the whole idea of salt. It wasn't just to go ahead and put on your, your, on your steak or whatever you might put on your corn. It was to go ahead and uh, preserve meats, to keep it around a little bit longer. It was really important. We don't think about salt the same way that we used to. Salt that was kept on the table now was really hard to get back in the day. Morgan and then Madison, we have to move on. Oh, since Diamond had so much salt, why, why couldn't they just buy salt? They could, well, that's the thing. That was the exchange, okay? It wasn't so much that they considered it buying as it was an exchange for gold as for salt. So it's the same thing. Okay, could you go ahead and maybe move over to the computers so you can see a little bit better? Great. Okay. So Ghana traded both gold and salt, okay? But it didn't have much salt. They traded, they had gold, they traded gold for salt, and vice versa, okay? So it was a big trading center. Also, rest your arm for a second. Okay. So we talked about how those major kingdoms, Mali and Songhai, increased their amount through gold and salt, okay? They had this increased wealth. But with this, guys, you want to think about what Europeans brought to North America, or not North America, I'm sorry, they brought to Africa. What are some things that maybe the Europeans, we talked about this a little bit. Give me a guess. They what? Well, it's close, okay? When the Europeans came over to North America, a big thing that they traded, Europeans traded clothes or cloth. Cloth and horses, okay? They brought horses over there, guys, because North Africa, for whatever reason, did not have it. Allison, what's up? Yeah, the caravans would go ahead and carry whatever trade that they had, and they would bring someone else. Blake. Well, that's the other way around it, okay? You can go ahead and remember it however you like, but remember, it's always north, east, south, west, and clockwise. Taya, then we have to move on. Well, they brought other things to Africa. Africa would go ahead and provide them something, but they had a surplus of both cloth and horses, so they brought that over there in exchange for other goods. No, they didn't necessarily all have a surplus of cloth, because if they, you know, if they weren't sure how to go ahead and make it, then they had to get it from somewhere, right? So they had to go ahead and pick it up maybe from somewhere else. Okay. Good, good, good. 
So remember, guys, we talked about this. Uh, Mansa Musa. Okay, who is Mansa Musa? Uh, a person. Oh, yeah, he was a person, but what did he do? Taya. He sold, he sold the gold. He sold the gold. Okay. That was a big thing. He did a couple of different things right here. He was a king of something. Yeah, he was a ruler, okay? He was a ruler, and he wanted to expand... He wanted to expand his area, okay? Wanted to expand, and as a result, Mansa Musa's rule resulted in his kingdom reached its peak, okay? And that's kind of a funny word, so let's go ahead and look at that. If we have the word peak, guys, let's think about it. Has anyone ever been on a roller coaster? Yes. Oh, yes. Lots of people, huh? Okay, so if you're on a roller coaster and you're going, say, and then you have this area right here, and then all of a sudden what happens here? You drop, right? And then all sorts of fun stuff, right? But right here, guys, this area is what's known as the peak. This is the high point. So when I say Mansa Musa was a ruler that wanted to expand, his kingdom reached its peak, what does that tell me? It grew. Well, it grew, but what else? Morgan? Oh, um, he wanted, it grew bigger to, to the peak. Yeah, it grew to its peak. That is the high point, okay? Think peak is the high point. And it can't go any further. That's the best it's going to do. Because once you get here, boom, it drops, right? So in this case, guys, it might not necessarily drop like a roller coaster would, but that is as high as, as it can be, okay? So with this, the whole idea is that Mansa Musa wanted to expand his borders, and, uh, and his kingdom uh, reached its peak as a result of it. Okay. He also... So I'm going to go ahead and call him M.M. Traveled to Mecca, okay? Mecca was a big place that he went to, okay? Uh, Mecca was a, a huge area, and they decided to go ahead and expand his trade borders through that. Allison, what? Did they what? different things that the Europeans got. Well, it, it depended on what they had a surplus of when they went to those areas. Okay. So here, he went to Mecca, and after a result, he improved, he improved trade relations between, and this is between, okay, that is just a shorthand version of between Mali and other Muslim areas or Muslim nations. Good. So let's go ahead and transition from this, guys. We talked about Mansa Musa, we talked about Africa, we talked about Europe, we talked, we talked about Asia. Let's talk about the Vikings. Okay, who are the Vikings? Who are the Vikings? Anaji. Uh, you guys ever see those commercials with Capital One where they say, what's in your wallet? Yeah. And they got the guys with the crazy pointed. Yeah. Those are Vikings, okay? That's what they look like. They really wear those hats. They, they like, it was like a group of people that lived in Greenland. Okay, good, very good. They started actually in Iceland. Oh, Iceland. Oh, yeah, they started in Iceland, okay? And the whole idea about going over to Iceland was that's where they originated. But they went over to Greenland, why? Yeah, they weren't invited. They weren't allowed. So Vikings were not welcome in Iceland 
because, and that's because, they fought with the natives. Okay? They fought with the native people there. So there, where did they go? If they weren't allowed in Iceland anymore, where did they go, Destiny? They went to Greenland. Is Greenland actually green? No. No, it's icy and it's cold. But the whole idea, guys, that they went to Greenland and called it Greenland, why? Why? So, like, other people Yeah, exactly, right? They wanted their fellow, fellow Icelanders to go ahead and come and be like, hey, this place is green, this place is wonderful, come see us. This place is wonderful, come see us. And then they went over there and they're like, oh, great, it's Greenland, let me go over there. Uh, those Vikings got me again. Okay, so the whole idea, guys, is that the Vikings were not welcome in Iceland because they fought with the native people, and they had to go over to Greenland. Yes? So, when Iceland people went to Greenland, they stayed there? They stayed there a lot of the time. Could they, back in the day, could they fly out? No. They're like, oh, I don't like this place very much. Let me go ahead and take a plane out. No, they couldn't. They obviously, they went on boats, okay, and they traveled by foot. By the time they got to Greenland, they're like, you know what, I'm tired. I'm going to stay here. I'm really disappointed so that it's cold here, but I'm going to stay. So they s okay. Allison. Um, how did they know it, was, it wasn't just another country? They took their word for it. They took their word for it. Ella and then uh, Madison. So when the Icelanders went to Greenland, they stayed there and the Vikings went to Iceland? No, the Vikings stayed in Greenland. I thought they didn't like each other. Well, they weren't. The natives and... It wasn't everyone in Iceland that didn't like the Vikings. The Vikings would go ahead and they would just be really reckless. A lot of people didn't, but it wasn't everyone. They had family in Iceland. They wanted them to come visit. Madison. After the word fought, what is the initial story? That's W slash. It's a shorthand for with. Okay. Good, good, good. We're almost there, guys. All right, so let's talk about the Portuguese, okay? The Portuguese benefited from exploring the coast of Africa because they got their hands on both gold and slaves, okay? That was a good, that was a huge part of why the Portuguese went over there. So with this, guys, the Portuguese, and this is always very difficult to spell, the Portuguese. G-U-E-S-E. Yeah. The Portuguese benefited by gaining both gold and slaves, okay? That's how the Portuguese really benefited from what they were doing, because they needed something as well. The Portuguese went ahead and they, they gathered up both gold and slaves, okay? So with this, guys, the whole idea is that we talked about Europe, we talked about Asia, we talked about Iceland, Greenland, we talked about all these places. Now, the effect of the European Ocean Trade, okay, the effect of trade is that it increased it increased relations sorry between the hemispheres. Okay? So if we were to go ahead and take a look, guys, the eastern and western hemisphere, the whole idea, guys, if we have the globe, we have the earth, if we were to go ahead and split it down the middle. Okay, we look at both the eastern and western hemispheres. This is improving their relations, okay? Now, all of a sudden, both sides are benefiting from different things that they can go ahead and involve. So instead of just being all on one side and them having everything, and then all on the other side, them having everything, all of a sudden they're interacting with each other and they're increasing the amount of stuff that they have. Allison. Um, if you were to take a picture of the Portuguese and the No, that's just a way of saying it. We wouldn't cut the earth in half, right? That's just the way that it's split up. Ascari and then Blake. What is that? 
the effect of trade is that it increased relations between the hemispheres. Okay? Good. With this, guys, remember we talked about what China owed its wealth to. China had a lot of silk, okay? A lot of silk resulted in wealth. Does that say two? Where? At a lot of resulted in wealth. Okay. The similarities with caravans, notice down there in the explain section. Similarities, it says between the Chinese, Ghana, and caravans. We're almost done. The similarities between these things is that they traveled great distances. Is this our last note? Of course. Yes, Alex. Between. They travel great distances. Yes. Yes, you may. Travel great distances to earn goods. This isn't our last one. We're close, though. Okay. I have a question about Yes. Okay, um, can you see? So, um, so, what are they, like, you put, like, something on camel? Yeah, they, they basically, it's like, uh, it's like a car, like, a, a, a camel will go ahead and carry everything. So, it. like, you, it would be sitting on its back and it's like a giant mm -hmm. thing? Yeah. How do they carry that? Well, they just balance very well. Allison. Do they, um, in Europe and, and like, China, do they still, trade? They sure do. Somebody asked that earlier. What do they trade? Various things that they have a uh, uh, like surplus like of. Like I trade like gold trade. Okay, so the Renaissance, guys, these are going to be, this is, this is close to the last three notes. Renaissance meant a new beginning, okay? Lots of new stuff. Lots of new thoughts and ideas. Okay. And the effect of improved navigation for the Portuguese. Effective improved navigation for the Portuguese was that they mapped most of. Mister, how is this Google's in my way now? Okay. The African yeah. coast. Can I come up? Okay. Very good. So that was the last bit of it, okay? Yes. Good. So uh, finish copying down these notes, guys. This is going to be put over on YouTube for you guys to view. So let's make sure that we go ahead and view it there.